Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Winwood Buddhist Temple Virtual Dharma Remembrance Service. Today, we will be remembering those loved ones who have passed away in the month of November. So I will ring the daiking after each name is read, and then go immediately to the chanting of the Sambutsuge, which is found on page 47 of the Red Service Book. We will begin the service with the chanting of the Vandana and Tisarana on page 7, we're praising Amida's virtue book. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samman Sambuddha Homage to him, the exalted one, the enlightened one, the supremely awakened one, Buddha. Saranam Gachami Namam Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami I go to the Buddha for guidance. I go to the Dharma for guidance. I go to the Sangha for guidance. <laughs> Oh, 
everlasting life may leave this human existence in peace and tranquility, be enveloped in Amida's infinite wisdom and inconceivable compassion. We honor with deep gratitude the members, families, friends, and pets of the Windward Buddhist Temple who have passed away in the month of November. With deepest gratitude to the boundless, inconceivable blessings of Amida Buddha, we take eternal refuge in the three treasures of this teaching. Esther Fujioka. Asher Oka. Ritaro Sumikawa. Sumie Asada. Tadayuki Nishita. Sawayo Hiramoto. Sai 
Recitation for today is the Golden Chain of Love. This is found on page 126 of your Red Service book. I am a link in Amida Buddha's Golden Chain of Love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds, knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in Amida's golden chain of love be bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu.
Well, good morning once again, everyone, as we continue with our weekly virtual Dharma service here at the Windward Buddhist Temple. Well, two Sundays ago, we held our first live service since the March of 2020, and we'll have another one next month for Bodhi Day. Our guest speaker was a former minister here who was in charge of this temple, Reverend Shindo Nishiyama. And he gave a wonderful Dharma message concerning the Nembutsu. Reverend Nishiyama related an incident on a flight to the Big Island about a man who became blind but was going to the Laupahoehoe area to see the ocean and the waves that he once saw as a boy. The man told him that although he could not to no longer see, the memories of the sound of the waves thrashing against the shore allows him to see the ocean itself. When he goes to the ocean and hears the sound, he can then see in his mind's eye the ocean. The Renishiyama said that the Nembutsu Amid, Namo Amidabutsu is the sound that reminds us that we are always embraced by Amida Buddha's compassion. It gives us the sound of wisdom and compassion through Namo Amidabutsu. Let's put our hands together in reverence as I read these words. Such is the benevolence of Amida's great compassion that we must strive to return it even to the breaking of our bodies. Such is the benevolence of the masters and true teachers that we must endeavor to repay it even to our bones becoming dust. Namo Amidabutsu. Well, this was taken from the hymns of the Dharma ages in the collected works of Shinran. In a recent article written by a now retired minister of the San Diego Buddhist Temple, Reverend Akahoshi wrote, that, wrote about the surprise that many visitors had when visiting a Jodo Shimshu Temple. He said that they thought that the atmosphere was somewhat casual and not as exotic as they had thought it might be. Rather, it was warm and welcoming and friendly as well. The members there did not seem to display the reserved and meditative posture that one might expect at a Buddhist temple. I guess this was the expectation of the visitors. At our own temple, for example, we have appointed members who warmly greet visitors, sit with them throughout the service if they are not familiar with the Shin Buddhist type service. As we know, the development of our sect is much different from other monastic type sects and is frequently referred to as householder Buddhism, a path for non-monastics in common everyday life. Akahoshi relates that following the lineage of the Pure Land Masters, Shinran emphasizes reliance on being mindful of the truth that our lives are the result of the effort of others, and that this mindfulness is maintained by the voicing of the refrain, Namo Amidabutsu. Rem remember the reading by the Mocho Otani called Our Pledge? We try to follow the last line especially that reads, realizing that I live because of others, I will strive to live life to the fullest with an attitude of gratitude, just like the Buddha who promises to embrace us all. Daniel Shonin writes in one of his letters that we who aspire for Amida's fulfilled land, though we differ in outward condition and conduct, should truly receive the name of the primal vow and never forget it, waking or sleeping. Well, here's a story that, that a haiku poet in Japan by the name of Sumita Oyama wrote. And this is about his experience during a visit at one of the beaches facing the Sea of Japan. This beach was famous for its huge and violently breaking waves. When Mr. Oyama visited the beach, he went to the shoreline and there he found many, many small round pebbles. When he picked up a pebble one day, 
and placed it in the palm of his hand, he could not help but saying, how beautiful this pebble is, how smooth and round it is. It must have endured a lot of hardship and suffering. When he said those words, the meaning of it could not be understood. What did he mean by those words? That it must have endured a lot of hardship and a lot of suffering. Abhisto Oyama explained it like this. When, when he saw the perfectly round pebble, he saw it as, as a symbol of the wonderful teachings of his teachers. At the same time, the pebble taught him that there was a rough and turbulent time before that perfectly round pebble came into being. Millions of years ago, that pebble was part of a huge seawall. Then a rock from the seawall fell onto the beach, and the violent waves repeatedly pounded at it. Then the rock broke into many, many small but ragged rocks. The violent waves repeatedly pounded those rough rocks so that they gradually lost their raggedness. After many years of pounding, they turned into those smooth, round pebbles. So when Mr. Oyama saw the pebbles, he realized that the ocean pounded those rocks for a long, long time before a beautiful pebble was born. Simultaneously, Mr. Oyama realized that because his teachers endured all kinds of suffering, struggles, and agony, their wonderful teachings came into being. He understood that they were the crystallization of the tears of his teachers. He could not help thinking of the background of the wonderful teachings of his teachers. He could not help but feel deep gratitude to them. Similarly, we can easily appreciate artworks, but it's not easy to see from where they are derived. Many people can readily appreciate the wonderful music of, for example, Beethoven and the wonderful paintings of Van Gogh. But it is not easy for us to gain insight into where they are derived from, into the depths of the spiritual struggle and agony. It is only when we gain insight into their background that this suffering and hardship, the, the suffering and hardship that they endured, that we can start to have a real appreciation for their artworks. Each month, we observe monthly remembrances at our Sunday services for those that have gone before us. During the ringing of the Daiking, as each name is read, we should delve deeply into the struggles they have endured during their lifetime, the heartaches and disappointments that they suffered, all for our benefit. But very often we tend to overlook those things and only see and enjoy the results of their hardship. It wasn't that long ago that many of them came by steamship from Asia where there were many starving families to look for a better way to live, a better way to sustain their meager life, only to come and find a life that was filled with even more suffering. Countless immigrants came from Europe seeking to improve their lot and fleeing from oppression of many kinds. Then two millions were brought from Africa to the shores of the eastern seaboard where they endured suffering, the magnitude of which we cannot imagine. They were the rough stones tossed by violent hardship throughout their lives. And we in turn are for the most part the smooth pebbles enjoying this ultra modern existence without a thought of what intervened between the early 1900s and today. In my own family, and, and I'm sure others 
have heard stories of their own and they have similar experiences. My, mater my paternal grandparents came to Hawaii around 1901 and worked at the Kilauea sugar plantation on the island of Kauai. After enduring harsh working conditions were there, they were transferred to the Kahuku sugar plantation with their infant son. After a year, my grandfather passed away from a severe illness, leaving my grandmother alone to fend for herself with my father. Having to leave Kahuku, she ventured to Honolulu where she met and married my step-grandfather. And after years of hardship, settled in the Pearl City Peninsula area with a growing family. But even then, life was not easy. I recall stories of my grandfather going on horseback into the Kipapa Gulch and staying there for several days and nights to gather kiavi wood to make charcoal for sale. So I and my cousins are here enjoying this wonderful life as round and precious pebbles. But polished? Well, that may, may be a question that cannot be answered by me. Akohoshi writes that, as I mentioned earlier in my talk, that this is a life of an ordinary householder that is much different from that of a monastic. The religion that was founded by Shinran that became the largest sect of Mahayana Buddhism interpreted the sutras in a way that resonated with that of the lay. Shinran emphasizes that reliance on being mindful of the truth that our lives are the effort of others. For those who are new to Shin Buddhism, Akahoshi suggests that we adopt the practice of saying thank you to all the conveniences that we enjoy daily, which is a shift from our usual mindset of saying please. That actually means that it is a request that life accommodate our every desire. For us, we can start each day with thoughts of gratitude as we recite the words, Namo Ami Dabutsu. We can continue saying this throughout our day, wherever we are, wherever we go, and whatever we are doing. This mindfulness is a meditative experience as we turn on the light switch, for example, or when we turn on a faucet saying thank you while driving and as the signal light changes, demonstrates our awareness that other cars have a green light and that our relationship with others is in harmony. This awareness, this spirituality is experienced in the flow of everyday life. For us ordinary householders, the practice of gratitude brings us directly to the heart of the Buddha's teachings. It is the attitude that in each moment, being human itself is a spiritual experience. I read this piece on a church pylon the other day, on a church that's on the corner of Pensacola and Kinao Street that read, happy people don't have the best of everything. They just make the best of everything that they have. The gratitude of Namo Amidabutsu alerts us to the awareness that the joys of love and compassion are available. Our practice is to appreciate what we have been given. A balance, to balance a desire for things that we lack. All our worldly activities and concerns are the gifts of an unseen spiritual source. Namo Amidabutsu affirms that even with the inadequacies of our egos, we benefit from so much in life. Gratitude brings us to an awakening to the fact that our everyday life is supported by the pillars of wisdom and compassion. So through the experience and conduct of attendees at a Shin Buddhist temple service, although they may, ap may be appear ordinary, it is the appreciation of one's ordinary life 
that lifts one's spirit to the heart and mind of the Buddha. In concluding this Dharma talk, let me read a poem written by Reverend Hiromi Kawaji, a former minister of the Hompohonganji, Hawaii, who lives in Pearl City and regularly attends service at the Pearl City Honganji. And it is titled, The Joy of Amida's Gift. He who accepts Amida's wisdom leads a cheerful life. He is made to know the causes of life's imperfections or sufferings. He is endowed with the ability to surmount these imperfections. He who accepts Amida's compassion leads a gracious life. He is made to appreciate the gift of life. He is made to realize the importance of sharing the gift of life. For the cheerful ones I met yesterday, Namo Amida Butsu. For the gracious ones I am meeting today, Namo Amida Butsu. For the Dharma friends I shall meet tomorrow, Namo Amida Butsu. Our gratitude for the Buddha's wisdom means our gratitude for all the things in our lives, not only the positive ones, but also for the negative. It also means our gratitude for the fulfillment of our own lives. So let me read, finally, these words in a verse from the Hymns of the Pure Land, written by Shinran Shonin. Those who truly attain Shinjing as they utter Amida's name, being mindful of the Buddha always, wish to respond to the great benevolence. Namo Awo. Nabutsu, we recite in gratitude. Thank you very much for attending this Dharma service, for listening to my talk. And now we will have the Gatha. Ondok sang, both in English and in Japanese. Oh.
influenced by likes and dislikes cannot rightly understand the significance of circumstances and is to be overcome by them. He who is free from attachment rightly understands circumstances and to him all things become new and significant. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Thank you very much for attending this virtual Dharma service. And we shall see you, hopefully, next week, Sunday, once again. Thank you very much, and be well. Goodbye.